Hey, my name is April Cassidy. I'm the peaceful wife and the peaceful mom, and I would like to invite you to be peaceful in Christ too. Today, I want to invite you into a story, and this story is all about you. It's about your fears, your hopes, your dreams. It's about where you are right now and where you really want to be and how you can get there. As a woman, there are several core desires that you probably have. You want to be secure. You want to know that you are safe emotionally, physically, sexually, financially, and in every way. You want to know that your identity is firm and sure and that when storms come, you will be unshakable. You want to be known deeply. You want intimacy with someone emotionally and spiritually who deeply understands you, fully knows you, and accepts you. You want to have strong, healthy, vibrant relationships with other people, with God, and even with yourself. You want unconditional love. You want to know that you don't have to perform, that you don't have to try really hard, you don't have to change yourself to be loved completely. You want to know that you are loved because you're you, and you long for empowerment. You want to be the very best version of yourself. You want to have all the tools, the information, the wisdom, the strength to be able to do what you know you are called to do in this life. You want to be an incredible blessing on the people around you, in your family, at work, at church, with your neighbors. You want to make a huge impact on the world for good. You want to leave a wonderful legacy that will impact the world forever, and you want to be part of a bigger story than yourself. So these desires are good desires, but you have a problem. You want to feel loved, secure, understood, accepted, empowered. But maybe right now reality is that you feel misunderstood, lonely, unloved. You're struggling. Maybe you want to try to improve yourself or your relationships or your situation and you have tried so hard and maybe things aren't really getting better and you don't know what to do. Maybe other people have caused you a lot of pain. Maybe you depended on someone and they failed you. The truth is life can be really difficult. Relationships can be hard with other people and things don't always go the way we want them to go. Maybe you've read books, you've talked to girlfriends, maybe you've even gone for some kind of counseling and you're still left feeling confused and frustrated and unsure of what to do. You are just beyond exhausted and you need some help. Some people will tell you to wait on others to change first. Wait for your husband to change. Let him change first. He's the one that really needs to change. Or let your mother-in-law or your parents change first. Or that grumpy coworker or your difficult boss or that neighbor that's so hard to deal with, let them change first. They're the ones that need to change. But the truth is a real hero knows she can't sit around and wait on someone else to change first. She needs to take the first step. Time is short. There's a crisis. Someone has to do something or things are not going to get better. Someone has to have a lot of courage and step up now. Of course, you may not see yourself as a hero yet. You may be full of insecurities and self-doubt. You may feel like you can't even change yourself. You can't even make yourself better. How can you be a hero for anybody else? You may have a lot of fear and anxiety and feel like you just don't know how to do this whole life thing, this marriage thing, this relationship thing. You may be tempted to think that your husband, your boyfriend, your parents, your in-laws, somebody else is really your enemy and if you could just get them out of the way or change them, then things would be better. But the Bible shows us that other people are not actually our enemies. We do have an enemy who is trying to steal, kill, and destroy, who wants to make us miserable, who wants to keep us from all that God has for us and wants to keep us from God himself most of all. Ephesians 6.10 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. There really is someone working against you trying to make your life awful. He hides himself pretty well in our culture, but his work is evident all around us if only we have eyes to see. He has been covertly feeding us lies 
through our culture, through the media, through friends, through our own self-talk, our own sinful nature, through books, through music, anything he can do to give us these lies, to tempt us, to build our lives on them. He wants us to believe toxic lies about God, marriage, masculinity, femininity, ourselves, others, relationships, anything he can get us to believe. Many of us have inadvertently built our core beliefs on a lot of these lies, and then we don't understand why when the storms of life come, we are so easily shaken because the foundation of our life is not built on solid rock. This is why our lives can be so painful and dysfunctional. When our lives are built on truth, when they're built on God's design, then things work their best. But when we build it on something else, it's sinking sand and it can't stand through the storms. If you're going to be a hero in your own story though, you need a boost. Every hero does. They need a guide, somebody who can show them the way, someone who has been where they are, who understands their weakness, who understands the baby steps of how to get from where they are to where they really want to be. They need somebody who has overcome adversity and succeeded. They need somebody to show them the way to victory. And we need somebody with a solid plan that can help us. It's actually a good thing when we get to the place where we realize we can't change anybody, we can't fix other people's problems, we can't change ourselves or fix ourselves either. We can't clean ourselves up because we have sin in our lives, because our human nature is weak and we need help. This humility and brokenness is the door that leads us to the narrow path God has for us that leads to life and hope. John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I want to see your life of frustration, isolation, loneliness, hopelessness, discouragement, and exhaustion turn from all of that awful stuff into confidence, contentment, fulfillment, peace, joy, spiritual abundance, and all of the empowerment that Jesus has for you in himself. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. If you are ready to be the real life hero in your adventure story and to follow the guide who can help you more than anyone, then I'm glad to show you the way. I'd like to share with you the peace plan. This peace plan is a simple pathway to show you how you can have real peace with God, with yourself, and as far as it depends on you, with others. There's four steps to this peace plan. Number one, look upward. Set your gaze on Jesus Christ in total awe of who he is and yield yourself fully to his lordship in faith. Step down off of the throne of your life, off of being in charge yourself and trusting yourself and your wisdom or someone or something else and allow the Prince of Peace, who is Jesus Christ, to sit firmly on the throne of your heart. Let him reign over your life. Number two, look inward. Invite God to help you crucify your old sinful nature with Christ so that you are no longer shackled and chained to that old nature that's so destructive. Invite him to fill you with a new identity in Jesus to give you his new nature, a new spirit, the Holy Spirit, to give you his love and his new life for you. Number three, look outward. After you have looked up to Jesus, looked inward and let him help you get rid of the toxic stuff and begin to receive good spiritual nourishment, then he will give you the ability to look outward at other people, including your husband, your marriage, your children, your boyfriend, your family, other people in your life. And he will be able to give you his eyes to see them, his perspective, his divine love for them, his ability and power to approach them and relate to them in healthy ways that honor God. He will give you the power to speak life instead of death into your relationships and to begin to pour his healing into others' lives and into the way you relate to people. Number four, look forward. 
Watch Jesus take the greatest seasons of pain, the most awful trials, difficult things, waiting, time that seemed wasted, even mistakes and sins in your life and things other people have done to hurt you and watch him take all of that and turn it into something beautiful for your ultimate spiritual good and his ultimate glory. And look forward to the greatest thing, which is your happily ever after in heaven with him forever and with everyone who loves Jesus with their whole heart. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord yet, you can come to know him today. Today is the day of salvation, scripture says. I'll have a link to a post below to show you how you can do that. And if you do know him, but you need spiritual healing because you are struggling and you're weak and you don't know what to do, there's also going to be a link to a post about spiritual healing that we can all receive in Christ below the video. Isaiah 26.3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Your deepest needs are satisfied in Christ alone. When you build your thinking, your heart, your life, your core fixed beliefs on God's word, a right understanding of his word and sound doctrine and his truth and love, he fills you up with everything that you are lacking. When you build your identity on Christ, he gives you security. He gives you unconditional love that is so much greater than the love of any person on the planet. He alone can truly help you be empowered to become the person you've always wanted to be. In Jesus, you are completely secure and unshakable. This doesn't mean bad things won't happen. Bad things do happen even to Christians, but you have him and his power, his love, his promises, his word, his presence, his spirit. And so you can be unshakable in him even when the storms come. In Jesus, you are fully known. He knows more than we know ourselves, just how deep our sin goes, how awful it is, but he also knows the good in us that he wants to bring to bear. He loves us unconditionally. There is nothing we can do to make him love us more, and there's nothing we can do to make him love us less. He loves us because he is love, and we are made in his image, and he wants us to have a close relationship with him. You are also in Christ empowered by the Holy Spirit to become the woman you always wanted to be, the wife, the mom, the person that you long to be. The very best version of yourself in the design that God created just for you. And then an amazing thing happens. As we look upward and submit to the Lordship of Christ, and as we look inward and get rid of the sin and let God transform us by the renewing of our minds and we let his spirit change us to make us more like Christ and we have security in our identity in him and as we look outward and begin to approach people with Jesus love and his perspective and his healing power and as we look forward to all that Jesus is going to do in our lives and in people around us the miracles and provision he has for us and heaven he then gives us the privilege of helping in his kingdom. He lets us be part of his heroic work to set captives free, to bring people into the kingdom of Christ, to share salvation, and to disciple others, to bless them, to help them to grow. What an incredible joy and privilege and honor to be part of the work of the very kingdom of Christ here on earth. We get to be part of his answers to prayer and his miracles in others' lives, not because we are so great and we are so good, but because he is so great and he is so good. In coming videos, I plan to share more details about this plan and about what I've shared today about your story. You are welcome to share in the comments or like and subscribe. You can also find me on my blogs, peacefulwife.com and peacefulsinglegirl.com. I'm so glad that you stopped by to share with me today, and I hope you will choose to have a peaceful day in Christ.